Welcome to the chemistry lesson number 2 on atomic structure. In this lesson, you will learn about the discovery of fundamental particles of atom, the atomic number, mass number, isotopes and isobars with Thomson's model, Rutherford's experiment, electromagnetic radiations, line spectrum and the line spectrum of hydrogen atom. Let's start our journey with a remarkable discovery made by JJ Thomson in 1897. He found these tiny particles called electrons which are negatively charged and much lighter than atoms themselves. But wait, if electrons are negatively charged, what provides the positive charge in an atom? That's when the positively charged protons stepped in. Electrons being 1840 times lighter than protons give atoms their negative charge. However, the mystery of atomic mass remained unsolved. Helium atoms, for example, are almost four times heavier than hydrogen atoms, even though we'd expect them to be just twice as heavy. To solve this puzzle, a brilliant scientist named Sir James Chadwick made an incredible discovery in 1932. He found the neutral particles called neutrons, which have a mass comparable to protons. So now, we have three fundamental particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons, which make up the atoms we know. Atoms aren't just made up of these fundamental particles. They have an internal structure, and that's where atomic number, mass number, isotopes, and isobars come into play. The atomic number of an element tells us the number of protons in its nucleus. It also represents the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So, nitrogen with atomic number 7 has 7 protons and 7 electrons. The mass number of an element is the sum of its protons and neutrons. For example, fluorine with atomic number 9 has a mass number of 19, indicating 9 protons and 10 neutrons. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same atomic number but different mass numbers. These variations in mass are due to the different numbers of neutrons. Hydrogen, for instance, has 3 isotopes: regular hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. Scientists proposed various models to understand the structure of atoms, starting with JJ Thomson's plum pudding model. In Thomson's model, Atoms were imagined as a positively charged substance with negatively charged electrons scattered throughout, like plums in a pudding or watermelon seeds in the pulp. However, Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment brought a surprising revelation. He discovered that the atom has a dense, positively charged nucleus, and most of the atom's mass and positive charge are concentrated there. Rutherford's model had a flaw, though. According to Maxwell's theory, charged particles lose energy as they accelerate, causing electrons to spiral into the nucleus. But we know atoms are stable. So, Rutherford's model couldn't explain this stability. That's when Niels Bohr, one of Rutherford's students, proposed his model, which introduced the concept of quantized electron energy and explained the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. Bohr's model postulated that electrons orbit the nucleus in specific pathways called orbits or stationary states. These orbits have fixed energy, and electrons can transition between them by emitting or absorbing photons. Based on Bohr's model, we can understand the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. Each spectral line corresponds to a specific transition of an electron between different energy levels or orbits. Let's explore the concept of wave particle duality. Light behaves both as a wave and a particle, and Louis de Broglie proposed that matter particles like electrons also have a wave nature. De Broglie's idea led to the realization that particles such as electrons have wavelengths associated with them. This revelation opened up a new world of quantum mechanics and further deepened our understanding of atomic structure. Let's begin with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, discovered by Werner Heisenberg in 1927. This principle arises from the wave-particle duality of matter and radiation, 
and it tells us that we can never precisely measure both the position and momentum of an electron simultaneously. The more accurately we try to measure the position of an electron, the less accurately we can determine its momentum, and vice versa. It's like trying to pin down a fast-moving object while blindfolded. The uncertainty principle sets a limit to how precisely we can know these properties. Imagine you want to know the exact position of an electron. If you measure it with perfect accuracy, delta x is equal to 2000, the uncertainty in its momentum, delta p, becomes enormous. On the other hand, if you measure its momentum with high precision, the electron's position becomes highly uncertain. It's a trade-off we can't avoid. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle applies to the microscopic world of particles like electrons, not to macroscopic objects like cars or airplanes. The tiny size and quantum nature of electrons make them subject to this fascinating principle. The wave mechanical model of the atom, proposed by the ingenious Erwin Schrödinger in 1926. This model takes a mathematical approach to describe the movement of electrons as wave functions, symbolized by the Greek letter psi, psi. Schrödinger's wave equation allows us to calculate wave functions that provide information about the probability of finding an electron in a specific region around the nucleus. These regions are called atomic orbitals, and they exist in three-dimensional space. By solving Schrödinger's wave equation, we obtain wave functions that describe the probability distribution of finding an electron in different parts of an atom. The probability is represented by the square of the wave function, denoted as psi square, probability density or charge density. Let's introduce the concept of quantum numbers, which play a crucial role in defining the properties of atomic orbitals. We have three types of quantum numbers, the principal quantum number, n, the azimuthal quantum number, l, and the magnetic quantum number, ml. The principal quantum number, n, determines the energy level or principal shell of the electron. It increases with each higher energy level, and it also determines the electron's average distance from the nucleus. The azimuthal quantum number, L, is responsible for the shape of the orbital. It can have values from 0 to n minus 1 and determines the type of subshell or orbital within a given energy level. The magnetic quantum number, ML, specifies the spatial orientation of the orbital. It can have values ranging from minus L to plus L, representing the different orientations of the orbital in three-dimensional space. Combining these quantum numbers allows us to describe the unique set of properties that define each electron in an atom. These properties include the size, shape, and orientation of the atomic orbitals. The electron spin, represented by the quantum spin number, ms, also plays a role, but it's not derived from the Schrödinger wave equation. It determines the direction of the electron spin and can have values of plus 1 to or minus 1 to. An orbital is a three-dimensional region around the nucleus where we have the highest probability of finding an electron. Let's start with the simplest orbital, the 1's orbital. The 1's orbital is spherical and represents the lowest energy level. The probability of finding the electron increases as we move away from the nucleus, reaching a maximum at a specific distance before decreasing. As we move to higher energy levels, such as the 2's orbital, the orbitals become larger and more complex. The 2's orbital has a larger boundary surface and a radial probability curve with 2 maxima, indicating the presence of 2 regions with high electron probability. The p orbitals come in three orientations, px, py, and pz. These orbitals have lobes with opposite phases and are aligned along the x, y, and z axis, respectively. Moving on to the d orbitals, they become even more intricate. The 5d orbitals have various shapes but the same energy level. They have nodal planes that divide the orbital into distinct lobes. The electronic configuration of an atom has three fundamental rules to guide us. The first rule is the off-bore principle, 
which tells us that electrons fill orbitals in order of increasing energy. The energy is determined by the principal quantum number, n, and the azimuthal quantum number, l. The second rule is Pauli's exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. This principle accounts for the distinctiveness of electron spin. Finally, we have Hahn's rule, which governs the distribution of electrons in orbitals of the same energy. According to Hahn's rule, electrons prefer to occupy separate orbitals before pairing up with opposite spins. That brings this lesson to an end. For additional information on this lesson, please look at the content below the video in the online course. To get a list of the important questions and their answers for this lesson, please refer to the guidebook by our publications provided to you with this course for free. It shows you a list of all the questions that have the highest chance of coming in your next exams based on research carried out on previous year question papers. All the best, all the best, and I will see and you I will in, the see next you in the next lesson.